Hello everyone, this is HR Perspective and today we have with us Mr. Atma Godara. He is the production HR at Netflix and he has also worked with several other MNCs including DHEL, Grey Orange and Oyo. Welcome Mr. Godara, thank you so much for doing this with us. Thank you Nishad, thank you for having me here. I'm happy that finally we're having this conversation. We are pretty crash passionate about digital transformations and bringing technology into the HR industry and everything. Today, the decided topic for us is our strategies to kickstart digital transformation and also the causes that, you know, sometimes lead to the failure of it. Uh, Mr. Badada, the first question to you would be, you know, everybody often speaks about the approaches to take, uh, you know, to get directed towards a uh, foolproof digital transformation path. But, you know, according to Forbes, 84% of organizations actually fail at it. So, you know, why do you think despite an abundance of resources and, you know, cautionary tales as well, some are still getting it so wrong? You know, what do you think are the actual three major causes of this? Sure, sure. I think, uh, okay. So, when we talk about the failure of the digital transformation or any transformation for that matter, we are saying it is a digital transformation because the technology is involved in. Okay. Otherwise, you talk about any transformation which happens around us in the organization or in our personal lives also for that matter, it have, tends to fail because of few things. I think the first and foremost thing could be, uh, is in my thought, the stakeholder buy, buy-ins. For example, if I want to implement something and if you want to, again, get into say, say, HR technology for, for that matter, right? We want to implement HR technology and this would be a huge change management exercise. So the first thing, which where people or uh, their organization lack a lot is stakeholder buy-in. Second, mm-hmm. time, you're going on the issue. It's like, what do you want to solve? Because when you talk about, say, you want to automate all our HR processes right. from zero to, say, you know, fully automated. Mm-hmm. So how do you zero in that? What are your first priorities? Where do you want to focus in the first uh, say stage? And where do you mm-hmm. want to focus on your second and third stage? I think that throwing on the prioritizing uh, is very, very important because the business as usual is, will run alongside your transformation. Okay. Business will not wait for you to implement what you want to implement with your HR transformation or finance transformation or okay. business transformation. So the BAU will run as usual. With that we, BAU, the team has to decide that, you know, which phase we should implement in what manner. Third thing uh, I think is very, which is very important is like you know lack of integration. When we talk about uh, digital transformation, uh, we generally don't don't have a convers- wholesome conversation. It's like Correct. you know we pick up say the recruitment first, mm-hmm. then we pick up say onboarding, and then we okay let's talk about the employee data data management or let's talk mm-hmm. about performance management. But mm-hmm. how can we have a smooth integration? When I say integration, it's like having multiple platforms. Is, is not something I'm against because when you talk mm-hmm. about integration, people are like, hey, just go with one uh, one service provider or one say partner, implementation partner or one product for that matter mm-hmm. to have a seamless experience. You can have uh, multiple products also. I mean, something for onboarding, something for EDM, employee data management, something like this. Also. So the integration is very important. I mean, until you don't have integration, there would not be a smooth Experience for the user. The last thing I think which is super critical mm-hmm. is management fees. If I'm implementing for my users, I don't know what I'm going to implement. I don't okay. know what is their need. If I'm solving the problem of my end user, or I'm just uh, implementing, or I'm going through the transformation because it is a business mandate or it is a board mandate. If okay. I'm going through that mandate, then it is I think destined to fail. Mm-hmm. But if I'm trying to solve a problem for my end user, mm-hmm. then I think there are high chances of success. Uh, many people actually treat digital transformation as something around you know, infrastructure and IT alone. And uh, many organizations actually go through digital transformation exercise for the sake of you know having a digital transformation uh, for the namesake, basically. So what is your take on it? See, infrastructure and IT are ne- non-negotiable, of course. I mean, yeah. if I want to have, um, again, like I would be focusing more on the HR transformation examples. Mm-hmm. I want to have, a, a, say, a new performance management system in place. Right. Fully digitized. But I don't want to uh, any, do anything manually mm-hmm. to reduce all the chances of error and for all the employees and managers to do their reviews and the KRA, KPI, and the composition appraisal, everything in the system. 
So in front, it is non-negotiable because if a manager decides that, oh, hey, today at 3 p.m. I will put the appraisal for my team in the system. Mm -hmm. I have one hour on my calendar. Okay. If applying and on goes on that form with your any of your again product yeah. any market a same uh, product. Mm -hmm. If it is taking time. If the person is uh, unable to upload, you know, the, the most famous thing I always uh, remember from my previous experiences that lots of complaints comes around that the, the, the website is not loading or the platform is not loading, right? So right. That is non-negotiable, of course. You have to have an infrastructure and IT in place. Having said that, this is not about, you know, having these are the hygiene factors. How comes the change management, which is the biggest thing that are people ready? Because any kind of change is something which, which we are we resistant as human being. Psychologically, we have been yeah. uh, evolved over the centuries in a way that we resist all kind of changes. Correct. Any change which come to us, we see as a threat. For example, in, in the ancient times when, when the human being patient live in cave, they see if the rain is like if they see it is raining outside, they will be threatened that hey, there's some danger, for example. It's a, as good as change of the weather, right? Yeah. Even if the weather is changing, it is it, it is a threat to these people. Right. In that sense, any change is scary for people. And yeah. if the change management exercise is not that effectively by mm -hmm. you know having those confidence in place, then it, it becomes more challenging and you know it, it, it goes towards the failure, then goes getting towards success. All right. So, uh, do you think actually digital transformation uh, failures can be categorized? Uh, I mean, we can't. Again, it's a like we can't actually go narrow it down. But yes, mm -hmm. we can put in the buckets at the stages. For example, the first stage could be conceptualization. Okay. While you are conceptualizing the idea, that could be one bucket for that matter. If I okay. I, I think of. Second bucket could be the implementation. I mean, these are very large buckets I'm talking about, right? Right, right. Implementation takes, all, you know, lots of time in, in, in getting things done that what we want to achieve. Again, implementation, very important. Second bucket or second phase for that matter. Mm -hmm. And that, that also becomes very important. And third thing I could be, I think, execution. Once you implement, you are getting into the execution, right? You're, right. you're having a one month of one month of hyper care period, then you will be having six months of uh, what you call uh, the caring period, for example, when you will receive lots and lots of complaints from the employees. Exactly. And then you will have the regular updates. There will be new and newer versions of the product, right? You will have, say, okay. 2A, 2B, 2C, or say, 2022. Mm -hmm. or 2023. Yeah, yeah. Like, which, I think these are major, majorly three buckets we can talk about. Conceptualization, okay. implementation, and execution. While we're talking about digital transformation, its failure, its causes, and everything, let us talk about what um, can be done to stop actually uh, these, you know, causes and this, these failures. So, because we, you know, very well know that prevention is better than cure. So, what do you think are the steps to be taken to actually ward off digital transformation failures? I think the first and foremost thing is like, why are we doing it? As in, mm -hmm. is it the need of the art for my organization? in that specific domain I'm targeting or it, it is happening because every other organization is doing in my industry. First thing. Second thing is, is like the mapping is very important. I say mapping is like today where we are and six months down the line or one year down the line where we want to be. So mapping is very critical, you know, from where uh, mapping as in long, like, you know, as is to be. So as is like the conditions what we are in today. Yeah. And to be like, how do we see the future and where we want to be? Yeah. Uh, what do you think are the steps to be taken while you know initiating digital transformation at any organization? The roadmap is very important, you know. Right. right. Roadmap that we know that HR technology or finance technology. Mm -hmm. How do we? How the business is growing? Mm -hmm. For example, if if my business intends to grow across say, ten countries, for example, next one year, then I have to accordingly plan my finance technology transformation or HR technology transformation across those 10 countries. Right. My business sees that they would be growing or they will would be getting into say only Philippines and Vietnam in the next quarter. Mm -hmm. But I plan that HR transformation for the entire Southeast Asia. So that would okay. be a mistake on the transformation phase. So roadmap is very important. Second thing I think again very crucial is the buy-in from your board or your CEO or your CXOs who are okay. change drivers for that matter. Having a buy-in mm -hmm. of 
these mm-hmm. people are very important because mm-hmm. at the end of the day they have to lead by example when it comes to adopting this transformation that would be yes. the second thing i think and uh, third thing is like you know assessing your employees for that matter as i, I can say that at what stage they are and how much hand holding they need or what kind of training they require yeah. for example when i was at phcl we were into this major transformation of technology okay. and people were little scared because they were working for 30 40 50 years for 30 40 years at least right. uh, without any technology for example inventory management is a good example okay. technology was coming in they were little scared Yeah, of course, our job, for example, because mm. if you compare with the nimble organization, which is it's a startups, I work with two startups also. Where okay. people, we have a younger generation where people are comfortable with the technology. Rather, they want to have better technological technological solutions to you know to their jobs. Correct. So, you know the, the the your employee set is more mature. They are able mm. to take more. You know they yeah. are able to go through the complete workflow also. Correct. Yeah. With an with an immature, digitally immature uh, employee set, if mm-hmm. you implement complicated workflows, that would be really challenging, and you know it will obviously doom to failure. But yeah. with a uh, matured uh, employee set, we can have complicated workflows also. So assessing your audience, rather assessing your employees, what stage they are, what kind of handholding they might require at the time of management, mm-hmm. very important. And then I think the last thing when. Whenever you have the launch of the new technological solution, mm-hmm. domain, right after the launch, that the first one month or two months are is this the hyper care period where you know when when it will decide whether it will succeed or it will fail. Okay. That period, what kind of support you are providing to your employees? Of course, awareness is the first piece. Second yes. is people are curious because the solution has been launched. In the yeah. magic, these people they will. try to understand that uh, uh you know what is it is and they will face lots of problems because you know we've just done your sit and uit and we have just launched it there would be so many challenges so in that hyper care period are you able to respond to your employees as quickly as possible mm-hmm. so we could have a help desk which is 24 by 7 available to our employees depending your employee i mean demographic that yeah. have been are located So that thing also becomes very. Good. We know that it is critical for digital transformation for any organization, but people often find it difficult to align that data accordingly with the different stages of you know digital transformation that they are in. So how do you think HRs can uh, you know do this in the right way? I, th- I, th- I think this is a very very interesting question, and thank you for asking this this one because the transformation or the workflow or the processes what you, what you have created are, are nothing but the skeleton okay right. the the skin not the skin exactly the the, the, the flesh and the meat yeah i understand that would be the data hmm. okay and how like you of course we the data has already been maintained in the one kind of system or in excel hmm. sheets or somewhere it is available when this data is infused into the system so that that mapping becomes very critical and as an employee let's talk about access management only if it's Yeah. in access management the employees have uh, it is one of the most complicated um, workflow what i've seen which is very mm-hmm. interesting it gets there's a lots of difficulties when you implement access management oh. it, it, it takes a lot to get the the balance correct on the system for example mm-hmm. i every employee remember their uh, leaves what had been granted to them how many leaves they have consumed across your el/pl sick leave and casual leaves Yeah, yeah, because the leaves are cashable, you know, cashable, and people right, you know, right. Yeah. right. Everybody technically remembers on their hands. Yes. And when you go, when you do this data infusion in the system, mm-hmm. the first thing, see, as an employee, when I I open the system, mm-hmm. I would only look for my pay slip and my leaves in the system. Yeah, pretty data much. From most of like ninety nine percent of the time, these are the two things which I will check as an individual part as an yeah. employee. So, if my leave uh, balance is not reflected correctly on the system, mm-hmm. I will lose trust in that system, right? Then, yeah. And then, then if you ask me to do the hiring, onboarding, or performance management composition through the system or exit mm-hmm. management, it, I I won't be interested in doing that because I won't be having trust in the system. Yeah, because a small thing couldn't be you know done through it. Yeah. Exactly. So 
the one example which I have given is absence management. So the data, correct data, is, see, it's very, very important when, when you're putting it in the system. Second thing is, is, is mapping. Mapping, for example, you have uh, one, one say, module of uh, hiring or uh, onboarding. And second, you have the your module of you have the module for employee data management. Right. Now, technically, you are transferring the data from one module to the other module. Right. Yeah. So the map again. The skeleton of these two models has like have have to be very similar to ensure mm -hmm. that there are no errors. For example, you can't have a first name and last name somewhere. First, last name, middle name, and the first name. But that shouldn't be not some in the team, and it would be mm -hmm. nightmare in that sense. So both for the team which is going to implement and the team which is as in the employees who are at the receiving end, mm -hmm. having the data, the right, the correct data and in the right format is very important. What do you think actually distinguishes those that succeed in digital transformation from those who don't? Okay, I think some of the things which we have already discussed as in the conceptualization and implementation, yeah. execution, mm -hmm. stakeholder buy-in. I mean, these are the and change management, of course, the most important piece here. Having said that, I think the organization which succeed, I mean, there's no formula around, around it, but we see a common pattern. The organization which have really succeeded are the ones which are, along with all these things, of course, which are agile enough to understand and do the course correction. Mm -hmm. I have a roadmap in place. I know how, how I'm going to execute. I know I have the stakeholder buy-in mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm going to do things uh, the way it has been planned, but suddenly COVID-19 hits the market, right? Mm -hmm. For example, and, and, and at that point of time, am I agile enough to change my strategy? Am I agile enough to put something on pause? Am I able to understand that what I have to prioritize at this moment? Mm -hmm. you know, going the way I was going earlier. So, agile enough, the agility plays a critical role along with all these things. Uh, you have been in this industry for quite a long time now. And so, what do you um, think actually HR means to you? Okay, that, that's a very heavy question though. But uh, I mean, it feels like you know, one for the Call his interview back to like why HR. Uh, yeah. But but uh, having said that, I think HR it's a very powerful function. When I say powerful function, like you know, you have this ability to directly influence the lives of people. You know, True. it's a yeah. mix of like you have to know how to have a conversation, right? You know how to articulate things very well. Communication is the key here because. Constantly, you are in that mode, be it an employee or a CEO or a board member, as in as a part of team HR team. And for example, when I was at BHL, we just joined from the campus. We were implementing this uh, HR technology, not HR, I mean ERP technology there. Mm -hmm. And as part of the core team, I was interacting with everyone, right from the employee to the board member to the director person. Right? Okay. So it, it takes uh, that way. The function is very powerful. And and then you know it is up to us that how do we use that, uh, power. that power to you know in, in, affect in, the organization and affect the people powerful. who are working. I think yeah. it is a very powerful function. A yes. lot can be done with this. Definitely, given the fact that you know HRs are commonly known as the people person, so uh, you know it definitely fit, fits right where you said that communication is the key, and you know you need to interact with every person in the organization and everything. Every function is a people function for that matter. With HR, I think at an early stage of your life, you get to interact and you get a chance to influence across the board. The business paradigms are constantly changing and everything. I think definitely there should be some more skills that they need to learn now. So what do you think is the one or two of uh, the top skills that we need to learn? I think uh, if I have to see, like if I have to zoom out at 30,000 feet and see, so one of one or two things. I think the first would be the ability to have authentic conversations. That you know, like you know, like as with the business leaders, with the employees, as an HR professional, can I have those conversations yes. where I really, you know, get the gist of it? Mm -hmm. Second piece, I think it is, I think in terms of skills, if I could think, is like uh, which, is, which is okay, this is a very important one. This came to my mind. Like, you know. How much comfortable I am with, with both the data and the stories. I mean, I say both the things as in stories. I like very. We have to change management is always a very big part of an HR person's life throughout. So, am I able to tell a good story to you know make those change management things happen? And second, do I make sense of the data which is available to me? 
I think this is this is a critical skill too. So thank you so much, Mr. Gudara. With that, we come to the end of the session. Thank you very much. Uh, no, no, thank you very much for having me here. I think it was a pleasure talking to you today.